Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He is good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Shea, the living God who loves you with a true agape love. He wants to fill your heart and your mind with the knowledge of His will and give you wisdom and spiritual understanding. He wants to keep your heart and mind in perfect peace so that you're not moved by anything. He is the Lord who is the strength of our lives. He is the one who <laughs> occupies all heaven and earth. His glory is in this place, even if we can't see it all around us, even if this world is dulled by the masses of sin. I said masses because it's, it's big. It's a big mass. But greater is he that is in us who have received the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died and rose again. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We've been given the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, and we live in him. We know that no matter what our situations are, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That one who teaches us all things reminds us of all truth. We don't lean on any understanding we have and not on anything that we're seeing with our physical eyes or hearing with our ears. We hear in the Spirit because we've been born on the wings of the wind. And that wind is the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about a physical wind that blows around the earth. I'm talking about the Spirit of God. Because of the way that He moves. The way that He's in our hearts. The way that He is teaching us all things. He, see, our spirit is like an infant. It's, it's not... It's willing. It's willing to do the, the good works of God today. It's willing to love people like Christ loves us. You know, we love because God first loved us. We love because He first loved us, not because we loved Him first. We were born into sin and he's taken us out of sinful nature and brought us into life and life more abundantly a life without sin and i didn't say that we don't mess up i didn't say that we don't fall into sin sometimes we don't walk headlong into it not wanting to resist the flesh but god has given us life i mean a life where we don't we can make a choice that i don't want to do that anymore and he's also given us repentance if we should mess it up. So please have a true heart. Have a heart of, of tr a true heart of life. A true heart of faith. A true heart that says God is. And that there's nothing impossible with him. Him sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. It, 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 see, there's a point to this stuff. This, there's a point to what God has done. He's telling all of creation there is nothing too hard for the Lord. And we, being the lowest subjects in this world, and I said that on purpose because, see, this flesh is in our way. We are corrupted by this flesh and blood body because we keep on seeing things out of the physical eyes and see, keep hearing things out of our physical ears instead of hearing by the spirit of life that is in us. Spirit is teaching our spirit how to walk by faith and not by sight. He's taking our, our soul and hushing it down, saying, look, this is the right way. Walk in it. This is the right way. Trust me. I know that looks crazy, but trust me. I'm working all things out together for the good of those who love me. The good of those who love God. Hmm? He's doing that because the situations and circumstances of this life, yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, it's too much. It's more than you can handle. But Jesus bore the yoke. He bore this burden and he broke the yoke. He broke the burden of the flesh, of man, of sin. <laughs> Let me see. He came that he might destroy all the works of the devil. I add a little bit to that. That he may destroy the works of the devil, the enemy. The one that is accuser of the, the accuser of the brethren, the one that comes against all the creation of God. 
Hmm? This, the thief, the one who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He deceives us through this flesh and blood body to hear things. He tempts us to hear it through the flesh rather than hearing by the spirit of life. When, that's, when he tempts us with this... Oh, wow. <laughs> when he tempts us with that family situation, when he gets our emotions all stirred up because he's hurting our brother or our sister, that mom, that dad, he's hurting that job, He's hurting us by the confusion that he causes. But everything, I, I, I have to back up a little bit and I, or, or just go forward a little bit and tell you that everything's not caused by the enemy. Sometimes things are being stirred up because God wants us to move by faith. He wants us to trust him and not lean on our own understanding. He wants to move us out of something and into something better. But we grow in maturity. We grow in the knowledge of God by the Spirit of God that He put in us. The Kingdom of God is right there in the midst of us, and yet we're deceived by what we see and what we hear. We won't just get up and go. And believe me, I do it all the time. I, I mess it up. I, I don't understand the way that He leads me sometimes. But I trust Him. I trust Him. I don't want to stay idle. I want to move in the way that God has called us to move in the spirit. I've got no time for the silliness of how I feel today. The hurt and the pain and the sorrow and all the grief. I can sit down before the Lord and, and, and make it all prayer. You know, the Bible says, yeah, let's go there. Don't worry about anything, Philippians chapter 4. I always like to add verse 5. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. If you need healing, if you need peace, if you need joy. I mean, all these things are already right there in us by the it's the gifting of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's conforming to the image of God to understand that you're in Him and that you have joy already. You have peace already. And it's all because our confidence is in Him. Our weakness is destroyed by the power of His love for us. We're His children. He fills us with the knowledge of His will. He gives us wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we can walk in our salvation. We can walk out our soul salvation in the knowledge of Him if we learn how to do this, these things right here. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. That's your life. That's not just a moment in the morning or, or, or on your knees at night. Prayer is an every moment ongoing thing. You can go about your business in this life doing whatever it is you need to do today. And the Lord is right there with you. He's never, ever away from you. If there's something that the Lord needs to detail in our lives so that we see it, and what we're seeing is trouble, we need to see the trouble like Jesus saw the trouble. This is an act of faith. But not an act of faith. This is acting in faith. Your our whole life is acting in faith. John chapter 14 and verse 27. I remember that in the King James, this verse, I'm reading it from another translation, that's so why I stopped to say this, but it says in the King James, don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <laughs> Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. He says here in verse 27, and, and starting in, in the, I, I think this is the NIV. I'm leaving you with a gift of peace. I'm leaving you with a gift of peace. 
peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give you. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I'm, I'm going away, but I'm coming back to you again. We need to remember that the Lord is coming back to us again. It wasn't just Pentecost. It's the day that we will hear him and we will meet him in the air. And we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to know how to overcome these fleshly battles, these thoughts that keep occurring in our mind, the fear that keeps tormenting our heart and mind, the anger that keeps overtaking you and leading you into sin. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Remember what I told you. He says, I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, and I'm going to end it with this, you would be happy. That I'm going to the Father, who is greater than I am. Now this is him, I know, going before the cross laying down the soul, nailing it to the cross. He's nailing down his mind, will, and emotions. And he's trusting the Father. This is Jesus, the Son of the living God. The one who was born into this flesh. He was the Father sent his Son to be born in the likeness of the sinful flesh. Yet he overcame the flesh, the devil, and the world. And he expects us to do the same thing. We are born of the Spirit now. We've said yes to Christ. We are now born of the Spirit and we're able to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of our flesh. The flesh leans on its own understanding. And we're crippled by it. This stuff will make, this, leaning on your own understanding will cause you not to hear the sound of the Lord. You remember the, the, this parable of, of the weeds, of the, of the seeds being thrown onto the ground and, and, and they couldn't produce anything. They couldn't grow. Seeds that were th thrown, thrown on, uh, on, on a little teeny bit of soil or something like that. You read it. <laughs> and, and they sprouted a little bit and they dried up. And then there's one where the thorns, where the, where the seed was sown let's say like in a nice little rose garden but you know roses have thorns and if you're not careful it, it'll prick you it'll hurt so now you have unforgiveness you have bitterness and resentment and you can't hear for the blindness of the flesh and i'm telling you we're, we're being born from above we're no longer See, if we have this understanding of God's perfect love, his peace for us, his joy over us, we can take every situation and absolutely let him work it out. Trusting the Lord with all of our heart, not leaning on our own understanding, but in all our ways, we're acknowledging him. The one who sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and delivered us from the power of the flesh, the devil, and the world. He took us out of judgment and brought us into himself. Do, do, do we understand that we are seated in heavenly places? We are seated in Christ Jesus in the heavenly realm. No matter how our family is acting, no matter how the job and the people on the job, the people in the world are acting, you have been saved by grace. You are delivered from the power of hatred and bitterness. It doesn't mean that they're going to stop hating you. It doesn't mean that they're going to come on into the body of Christ. It doesn't mean all that. It means that you are protected. You are kept. You're, the shield and surrounding shield of God is in you and all around you. The word of God is a shield in a surrounding shield. The Word of God is what sanctifies us and keeps us from evil. Evil might be outside of you, in your household, or on the job, or in the supermarket, at the wherever. Evil is the report the doctor gave, but it was really just telling you of a masked symptom 
that is going on inside your body. Maybe, maybe it was a seed planted in your mind on, on, on your pillow at night that the devil sowed. Maybe it was all those commercials and infomercials you saw on that particular disease and now it's entered you because you've conceived that word. Word is A word is something that's conceived. It's conceived, just like, just like a, a sperm and an egg. It, it's conceived. So we cast out these high thoughts. <laughs> we cast down every high thought. Where, where's that at? Um, come on now. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. You could go to 7 if you want to. Because if we look at things after the outward appearance, we need to change our mind. We need to cast down every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity by the Word of God. We bring every thought into captivity by the Word of God. So why is this called born on the wings of the wind? Because we're born of the Spirit. We are born of the, of the Spirit, and our, and our strength, our power, our wisdom is all in God. And the Spirit of God reminds us of everything that Christ has said. He speaks truth to us. And mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I got back from a, a conference yesterday, and as I entered back into the city, into this city. I felt like, oh, this is a burden. <laughs> As I walked into the house, I, I, I just felt like, oh, what a burden. It, I really did. And, and, and after going out and, and getting what I got and giving what I had to give, oh, man, I'm telling you, I was like, my heart was like, oh, this is great. And then you come back to your own hometown, it's like, oh, the burden. <laughs> I walked into the house and it's like, oh gosh. I looked at the lawn first and I was like, oh, it had to grow, didn't it? I looked in the house and oh man, my furniture. Oh, from everybody being on it, it's kind of stinky. <laughs> so I, I don't mean to complain, but I'm just telling you how I felt. And then the family situations that occurred while I was gone, like. You know, it's not like if I was here, I could have stopped those situations from happening. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I won't be frightened or fearful for, for what people do. The Lord has an answer for that. And he said that my whole household would be saved. I'm going to stand on what he said, not on my feelings, and try to go solve their problems for them. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord is the strength of your life and will lead you into all prayer. All prayer is how we resist the enemy because we give all of our cares to the Lord who cares for us. He knows how to work all things out together for the good of those who love them. Him. <laughs> We're in Christ and Christ is in us and he's done all the work. We don't have to do that. We just have to have faith. We have to believe. And faith has works. It resists the devil. James chapter 4, submit to God. Our submitting to God is, sub, is, is taking and coming here to the Word and letting the Word work in our heart. We're born of the Spirit. We're not born of our flesh anymore, the fleshly nature. We're not, we're not uh, walking along according to how, oh, that's terrible. Why are they doing that? Oh, that child, here he, they go again. You know, no. If anything is going on in your house today, you have peace. The Lord's going to take that thing and work it out for your good. For their good. <laughs> he knows what to do. Don't be frantic. Get in the secret place of the Most High. Get in that place where you hear the Lord's voice. That situation, if you pay attention to it, it will derail you and pull you away from the Father. It'll, it'll try to dull the, the sound of the Holy Spirit living in you. i got to hurry up, I guess. 
I didn't get to finish. I didn't get to take us to John chapter 3 and verse 8. I think it was 7 and 8. And then there was a, a, another one. Isaiah chapter 40, and verse 30 and 31. Let me try to do it real quick here. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar uh, high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. By the way, the song of the day is <laughs> Jira, you are enough. Hmm? I will be content in every circumstance. Jira, you are forever enough. I know I botched up those lyrics, but I'll try to put it in the description. Because we cannot be directed by how we feel or what things look like. Jesus would have fainted going towards that cross, you know. But he bowed his knee before the Father no matter how great the pain. He said, not my will, but your will be done. And the Lord, he, I'm telling you, he'll work out the situation, the circumstances of this thing. He's got you. If he's going to save your family, then he's going to save your family. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lose your soul over them. Don't lose your soul over him. Let your soul prosper in the knowledge of God by resting it in the hands of Jehovah. I didn't get to finish Philippians. I hope I remember that I put it in there. John chapter 3. Verse 7. He's talking to, ne uh, to Nehemiah who is wondering how to be born again. Let's start in verse 5. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of and, and the spirit. Humans cannot reproduce only humans, sorry. Humans can per, reproduce only human life, but the spirit gives birth to spiritual life. The spirit of God gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind blow, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So you can't explain how people are, are born of the Spirit. We're born of the Spirit. And Jesus likens that to how the wind blows. You, you, can't, you can't really know the full direction of the wind from day to day. But we are born of the Spirit of God. And this human nature of ours needs to be brought into captivity so that we can learn how to be the spiritual beings that we are. We're spiritual beings in a physical body. Okay, I, I gotta go because my mind keeps going. I can hear more word and I'll try my best to pick upon this again tomorrow. But be filled with the spirit of life and walk in the nature of God, not the nature of our own understanding, our flesh, our mind, will, and emotions. Be strong in the Lord in the power of His might, the power that raised Christ from the dead. The Holy Spirit is walking with us. He is in us, to us, and through us. The Lord is not going to let us go, no matter how great your situation is. He loves you. He can heal your body. He can cast out that devil. In fact, we command devils to leave your house right now in the name of Jesus and not come back. The Lord is there. And this is his house. You're his temple. And no weapon formed against you or your household will prosper. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I love you all. And uh, <laughs> fight the good fight. Bye-bye.